Versus System is a card game that pits two to four players against one another, and whomever has the last character standing wins. It's built around recognizable action and adventure properties including Marvel's comic book superheroes, their cinematic counterparts, Alien, Predator, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and the X-Files, with new properties being added about every year. This is how it works. You choose from an ever-growing list of main characters, for example Captain America, Magneto, Ripley from Alien, Mulder or Scully, and build a deck around them using a colorful cast of supporting characters, equipment, plot twists, and locations. You'll battle your opponent, mixing things up with unpredictable plot twists and firing off superpowers, trying to knock them out before your main character gets KO'd. It's worth understanding that Versus System was originally a trading card game that was cancelled about a decade ago. Today there's a new version, denoted by the acronym 2PCG for 2-player card game, which is an expandable card game. That means every box you buy comes with a complete set of cards. No need to chase rare cards or pay a premium for the best cards. This second version persists to this day and has in fact outlived the original Versus System. What's more, it's been steadily growing since its inception. There are more people playing Versus System now than ever before. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to play the game, but for now I'm going to skip setup and some of the beginning steps of the game and get straight to the fun part, combat. On the table, you can see my main character, Spider-Man, and my opponent's main character, Hulk. Looking at each of these cards, we can see their attack, defense, and their total health. My goal is to get my opponent's main character down to zero remaining health by making attacks against him. I'll declare my attack with Spider-Man by exhausting him, turning him sideways. During combat, my character will strike my opponent's character, and the opponent also gets to strike my character back at the same time. Think of it like the two characters are brawling with each other and exchanging blows. To resolve the combat, I compare my attack value with my opponent's defense value. If it's equal or higher, Hulk will be stunned. Now, the enemy character also gets to strike back. Since Hulk's attack value is equal to Spider-Man's defense, my character will also be stunned. When a character is stunned, it's exhausted, remember that's turned sideways, and flipped face down. Since my Spider-Man is already exhausted, I just turn him over when he gets stunned. Stunned characters then gain one wound. If a main character's wounds equal their total health, you're out of the game. That's the simplest way to think about combat, and if you understand that, then you understand the core of how Versus System works. Of course, there are a few other mechanics to make the game a lot more exciting and unpredictable. Most main characters have a power called a superpower. A superpower gives your character a special ability that can be used during the game's different phases. It also has a power symbol that represents what you need to pay to activate that power. Black Widow has a superpower called Infiltrate, which can be used during the main phase and costs a red target power symbol representing the concept of skill. If you have a location that grants you a matching power symbol in your resource row, you can turn it face down to pay for a power, or if you have one in your hand, you can discard it. Once a location is turned face down or discarded, you don't get it back. It's gone for good. Superpowers are very strong, but you only have a few power symbols per game, so choose when you use them wisely. Another kind of power that main characters have is called a level up power. This power upgrades your character into a more powerful version with bigger stats and additional superpowers. Getting your main character leveled up quickly is a good way to get an edge on your opponent. Level up powers tell you what you need to do to gain XP or experience points and the amount of XP required to level up. Black Widow has a level up power called Take Down the Target, which requires her to stun an enemy supporting character two times to go up to level two. When she levels up, her attack and defense increases and she gains two new superpowers. The third and final power type is called a keyword power. Keyword powers are always on while a character is face up. You don't have to pay for them like you do with superpowers. Falconer from the Predator franchise has a keyword power called Activate Falcon Drone, which lets him start the game with a Falcon Drone on your side. You don't need to pay any power symbols to use this power. As a keyword power, it always just works. Most keyword powers are written out on the card, but there are two very common keyword powers that have special icons, flight and range. These icons are displayed on the left-hand side of the character cards, and if the icon is lit up, that means they have that keyword power. Storm has flight. Captain America has range. And Iron Man has both flight and range. 
You'll soon see that flight and range are both very important for declaring attacks. There are two kinds of characters in Versus System, main characters and supporting characters. You start the game with your main character in play. Every other character that appears on your side is a supporting character, and you use them to help support and protect your main character, because if your main character is KO'd, you lose the game. Supporting characters have all the same card attributes and power types as main characters, except for level up powers, because supporting characters can't level up. In place of a level is the supporting character's recruit cost. The higher the number, the stronger that character is, but the more expensive it is to recruit that character. You'll learn all about recruiting supporting characters a little bit later. Supporting characters usually have less health than main characters. If they have more than one health and they become stunned, they'll receive a wound counter and they'll stick around during your next turn. If they only have one health when they're stunned, or their wounds are equal to their total health, they get KO'd. Charlie 27 gets stunned and takes a wound. He'll recover and ready next turn. Major Victory gets stunned and is KO'd. Gamora has a wound already. When she gets stunned, she gets KO'd. Each player has three rows in Versus System where they can play different cards. A front row, a back row, and a resource row, which I'll cover later. The front and back rows are where you put your characters. You have to think carefully about which row you want them to go in depending on if you want to be offensive, defensive, or a combination of both. I'll show you what I mean now. When you're attacking, characters in your front row make melee attacks. Any character can make a melee attack as long as they're in your front row. That plays out exactly like I showed you earlier, when two characters strike each other simultaneously. The back row is for range attacks. A character can only attack from the back row if they have the range keyword power represented by the range icon. Attacking with range is very strong because if the character you're attacking doesn't have range, they don't get to strike back. Hawkeye makes a range attack from the back row against Fluke Man from X-Files. Hawkeye strikes and stuns him, but because Fluke Man doesn't have range, he doesn't get to strike back at Hawkeye. Think of it like if I'm shooting at you from a distance, but you don't have a ranged weapon, you can't just punch me back because I'm too far away. I'm attacking you at range. Again, the front row is only for melee attacks and the back row is only for range attacks. You can't make a range attack from the front row. And even if your character has range, if they attack from the front row, it will always be a melee attack. Your formation also matters when you're defending. When your opponent attacks, characters in your front row protect your back row. That means your opponent has to stun your entire front row before they can attack your back row. My opponent's main character, Fox Mulder, is protected by supporting character Black Panther in the front row. If I want to attack Mulder or any of the other back row characters, I have to stun the character in the front row first. There is an important way your opponent can still get to your back row, however, and that's if their attacking character has flight, indicated by the flight icon. If a character has flight, they can fly over your front row and attack characters in your back row, no matter how many characters are protecting them in your front row. The one way you can protect your characters from being attacked by flyers is by also having a character with flight in your own front row. A flyer in your front row blocks your opponent from flying over it into your back row. Your opponent has to stun all of your front row flyers before they can fly into your back row. My main character Buffy is protected by Willow and Mysterio, who has flight. My opponent has Vision and Yondu, who both have flight. Ordinarily, both of my opponent's characters could fly over my front row to attack my main character, but since Mysterio has flight and is in the front row, my opponent's characters have to KO him first. If Vision attacks and KOs Mysterio, Yondu can now make attacks against my back row, even though Willow is still protecting Buffy. Note that flyers in your own back row don't fly over your front row to make melee attacks, because the back row is only for range attacks. A character with both flight and range will get the benefits of both of those keyword powers, but they still must follow the same rules for declaring attacks. As a recap, anybody can make melee attacks and only melee attacks from the front row. Characters with range can make range attacks from the back row and don't get struck back if their opponent doesn't have range. Characters with flight can fly over the opponent's front row to make attacks against protected characters in their back row unless the opponent has a character with flight in their front row. 
Once you're in combat, there are two ways to change the outcome by granting your character special abilities or boosts to their attack and defense. Starting with the attacking player, you each take turns either using superpowers or playing plot twists from your hand. While your main character probably has one or more superpowers, you can only use them during the phase of the game indicated on the power. There are four kinds of superpowers you can use in combat. The first type you can only play when it's your turn, in other words, when you're attacking. The second type you can play on any player's turn, whether you're attacking or defending. This is indicated by the purple circle of arrows. The third kind says any combat and means you can use that power even when the character is not in the act of combat. And finally, there are any turn, any combat superpowers. There's one more way to change the outcome of combat, and that's by playing plot twists. Plot twists grant temporary modifiers, abilities, and other effects. While many plot twists are combat oriented, there are some that are played outside of combat during the game's other phases. Like superpowers, each plot twist tells you which phase you can play them in. During combat, my opponent uses Venom to attack my shield agent. They pass to me, and I play a plot twist called Savage Surprise to give my character plus four attack. When we strike each other, my character is KO'd, but because I played that plot twist, I stun and wound their character in return. On my next turn, their character is still face down, so I can't attack it, but I have another plot twist in my hand called End Stay Down that I can play during my main phase. It lets me wound a face down supporting character, so I can KO Venom without even entering combat. Plot twists can make the game unpredictable for your opponent, but each card takes up a slot in your deck. Tuning your deck with the right mix of cards can be a fun challenge and is essential to becoming a skilled versus player. With that, you now have a pretty good idea of how to play versus system. There are a few other things to cover, but the rules around combat make up the bulk of the game, and that's typically where most of the fun lies. Of course, Versus System's card pool is expansive, so there are a lot of ways to change things up and experiment with different playstyles and strategies. Now that we've covered the rules of combat, let's rewind and start at the very beginning. I'll walk you through setup and go through every phase in each turn. Before you begin, each player builds a deck of 60 cards plus their main character cards. Randomly determine which character gets to choose who goes first. Both players reveal their main characters and place its level 1 card in their front or back row, and the character's other level off to the side. Then players draw a hand of seven cards from their deck with the ability to mulligan their first hand. The first phase of the game is the draw phase. During this phase, the active player draws two cards from their deck. However, the player who goes first must skip their first draw phase. That's because the first player has turn advantage, or the ability to bring out stronger characters first. The second player doesn't have to skip their first draw phase, which gives them card advantage, or the ability to have more options in their hand early in the game. Usually it's better to have turn advantage, but sometimes you may want to go second to get the extra cards. The next phase is the recovery phase, where you recover any stunned characters and ready all of your exhausted characters. This refreshes your side so that each of your characters can make attacks again. The next phase is the build phase, which allows you to build up your resources and your team, and it's broken into three steps. First is the resource step. During this step, you may put one location card from your hand into your resource row face up. That's the third row I told you about earlier, behind your back row. Cards in your resource row will give you the ability to bring out bigger characters or more characters as the game progresses, and you can turn locations there face down to pay for superpowers. If you don't have any location cards in your hand, you can put any other card into your resource row face down instead. You can opt not to put any cards in your resource row, but this is usually a bad idea. Even sacrificing a card from your hand by putting it face down in your resource row is often better than not gaining a resource. Let's pretend we've gone three turns, and we now have three cards in our resource row. Next is the recruit step. Count up the number of resources you have in your third row. That's how many recruit points you have to spend this turn. You spend these points to recruit supporting characters from your hand. Each turn, as your resources grow, you get more recruit points. The more recruit points you have, the bigger the characters you can bring out. Since we have three recruit points this turn, we can recruit a character of cost three, or we can recruit two or more characters whose total cost is three or less. You can also recruit equipment in the same way. Equipment are cards that you equip to characters to give them access to additional powers and attack and defense boosts. Unlike plot twists, equipped characters get to keep these boosts until they're stunned. The final step in the build phase is the formation step. 
During this step, you decide which characters you want in your front row and which you want in the back. Choose wisely, because once you start your main phase, you can't move your characters until your next turn. The final phase is the main phase. This is the phase where you can make attacks against your opponents. When you declare attacks, you leave the main phase and enter a combat phase, but after each combat ends, you return to the main phase. You can make multiple attacks each turn, and once you're done, you can end your turn. Now it's your opponent's turn, and they begin with their draw phase. There's one more important thing to talk about, and that's team affiliations. Each character has a team that they're a part of. This is important for two reasons. The first is that many plot twists and equipment may only be played if you have a character who shares its team affiliation on your side. To play the Chosen One plot twist, you need to have a character who is part of the Scoobies team from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That could be your main character, or it could be a supporting character. The second thing to consider is that characters who share a team affiliation can make team attacks if they're in the same row. When you make a team attack, you exhaust each attacker in the combat. You then add their attack together when the combat resolves, and your opponent chooses one of your characters to strike back. This is a good way to overcome stronger enemy characters if you have weaker characters on your side. In this scenario, none of my characters are strong enough to stun my enemies Thanos on their own, but since they share a team affiliation and they're all in the front row, they can team attack together. When combat resolves, the enemy player will choose one of them to strike back. With that, you should have a good idea of how to play Versus System. The game is easy to learn, but it takes a lot of skill to truly master, and the number of cards in the collection continues to grow, with new cards being released monthly. If you're wondering which set to buy first, I recommend starting out with the Civil War Battles, a brand new 200 card set with rules and counters included. It's streamlined yet powerful, and that makes for a very good jumping on point for new players. Additionally, any set with the word battles in the name will also have everything you need to get started. Thanks for sitting here with me for this learn to play video. I hope to play across from you soon.